Welcome or welcome back to Lift You Up Inspiring Health Stories. I'm your host, Tamika Bickham. I'm the founder and chief storyteller of CB Media Group, but for the purpose of this podcast, I am your health and happiness matchmaker. Now, before I introduce you to today's guest, you know what I'm going to ask you to do. If you haven't done it already, subscribe on YouTube, turn on notifications, and connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to stay connected with you. Today, oh, I can't even tell you how excited I am for today. You are going to meet an old friend of mine, a fellow Miami Hurricane. Her name is Cynthia Fleischman. She is the co-creator of Body Paintography, and she's honestly one of the most inspiring, special, kind-hearted people I've had the pleasure to have on this podcast. You don't want to miss her story. Her life changed drastically in 2015 after she was hit on a motorcycle on I-95. She goes through that story and also how it's changed her life, her artwork, but also how she's inspiring other people. You don't want to miss it. Our physical, mental, and emotional health is not just a want. It is a need for happy lives and prosperous businesses. Lift You Up is the podcast where we share inspiring health stories from business owners who are fulfilling their purpose to live their healthiest lives and helping you do the same. From former TV reporter to marketing entrepreneur and content creator, I care about sharing stories that matter and stories that connect us. I'm your host, Tamika Bickham, your health and wellness matchmaker. Well, today I am super excited, (laughs) I can't even tell you, to see my old friend, fellow Kane, go Canes. Cynthia Fleischman, um, who's a cane, my friend from college, um, an inspiring, beautiful soul, and also, as some of you may know her, the creator, founder of Body Paintography. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Tamika. (laughs) So cool to be here. I'm so excited to reconnect with you, and I think the last time we saw each other was years ago either like at the end of college, so I'm not going to name the year because I feel like we're getting to that age where we're like, let's not talk about the year that that was, but, or shortly after the end of college. So it's been some time. I mean, there's so much I want to dive into with you, but tell me what you're doing now, because I can see if you guys are watching this and not listening to this, you'll see the incredible artwork behind Cynthia and you're a beautiful artist. So tell me what you're doing now. Thank you, Tamika. I am still working on body paintography. I started doing this in 2009. So um, I have my little gallery. My home is my gallery space and some of my works are on the walls behind me. Um, I paint people into environments and then I take the photography um, to create this beautiful connection between person and place. I'm inspired by animals. I love how their colors and patterns are part of their places and environments. So I try and simulate that with humans and create that visual respect. And what am I doing? I do that. I'm painting. I'm working on this Harmony Strand project. I'm trying to become a better water skier. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. So, okay. I didn't realize you were working on this since 2009. So did you know you were always going to pursue making art? That I, well, it's just in me. Mm -hmm. My freshman year, I didn't take any art classes because I was like, I'm not going to make money doing this. I should do something else. And my first semester, I was just miserable because I didn't have any art classes. So I, I signed up second semester. And my favorite thing was just, you know, it's hour, it takes hours of time to like be in the studio drawing, but I would love it. I'd put my salsa music on. I'd be there on a Friday night by myself, jamming and drawing. <laughs> so, um, I just knew that that was my passion. And it's only on my senior year when I started painting directly onto the body is when I started discovering this new direction. And I realized I needed photography to capture the ephemeral art that I was creating. And so that put me in a whole new direction. I love that you said that. You were like, okay, I'm going to do something else because it's not going to make me money. And and 
you are miserable, which I feel like happens to so many of us, right? When we're like not aligned with what we're doing because we're thinking about what we should do versus what we really want and feel in our hearts. So you're like, I'm not happy doing this. I want to be happy and I want to do what lights my soul on fire. So you pursued your art. So at what point did you like, how did you come up with the idea of wanting to paint on the body? Well, I did. I found this book at my mom's house called Cuerpos Pintados from um, a guy in Chile called Roberto Edwards. And I was flipping through that book and it was just so beautiful how the painted bodies in the book like brought the abstract expressionism to life in a new way. And it was so beautifully done in studio with black backgrounds or white backgrounds. Um, and that's what inspired me. But I just thought that there was a disconnect between person and place. And so that brought me into this new direction of like, well, I wanna paint people into places, like the animals connect with their places. <laughs> and it, it's perfect because I was getting really, like I love painting, I love creating art, but I also am a very social person. And I didn't enjoy then being in the studio by myself for hours and hours and hours. So there's a, you know, a chunk of time that's okay, but then too much time doesn't work for me. So then painting on the body is, it's an amazing experience with somebody new and we're going on an adventure and we're chatting the whole time. And so it's really social and fun com compared to being alone painting. So it's a totally different direction. I, yeah. So I was oh really my gosh. I happy love to that. combine that all. I'm, I'm loving this story. So you were able to combine the artist in you with the social nature in you into one. I mean, it's, it's brilliant. It makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I love it. So it's since 2009 and then several years later, I don't know exactly when, um, your life changed. Hmm. Drastically. <laughs> Drastically. I, so tell yes. me about that. In 2015, I became an amputee, an above knee amputee, um, my right leg. And that is from a motorcycle accident. I was riding with one of my friends on 95 North in the express lane, and we both had our own motorcycles. And a car who was in the regular lanes, all of a sudden, there was some pins missing, and he just took that opportunity to jump over into the express lane without looking twice. And it was just that second when we were riding by, and he came over and hit me right on my right side. And I hit my friend Kathy, and we both went down. We hit the barricades, and it's an absolute miracle that we're still here. I feel very, very blessed. And it should have just been way worse. I don't have any head injuries or spine injuries. My friend, Kathy, she broke her foot and it healed in a cast. And I just feel like we were both carried by angels and placed in safety. You know, there was no cars behind us to like, you know, run us over after. It was just my motorcycle ricocheted off of hers and it ghost rode through the five lanes of traffic on 95 North oh. and landed on the other side without hitting anybody. I mean, it's just... I'm just so blessed to be here. So I lost my leg. It's definitely a huge inconvenience, but I take it with a grain of salt because I'm still here. Oh my gosh. Wow. Still here to see another day. You know, it's just so interesting how life happens, right? You go to college, you meet friends. Like we definitely were friends and hung out on, you know, several many different occasions and then um i remember seeing your story on channel 10 uh, and maybe we, you know we kept in touch on social media online but i was a reporter at channel 10 shortly after i left i remember seeing your story on mm. the news there and i was just i mean obviously i had kept up with you so i had an idea as far as what happened but i didn't know the story and then seeing that there and then we just ran into each other for the first time in all these years um a week ago at the time of this recording we're chatting now in january of 2021 um and i felt like it was just so meant to be that we ran into each other to catch up and my friend who i was there and when we ran into each other 
um, with at the time, and I didn't tell you this, but I said to him that in a way, and I don't, I don't mean that, I mean this in like the most positive way, like it was almost meant to happen to you because you're such a positive person. Like I feel like you are a person that is able to handle that and like turn like a negative into a positive. And, you know, I, I feel like so inspired by your story and just everything I've seen you share online about it um, and just being so open and uplifting and just even saying that, like you're you take it with a grain of salt um, because you're so happy to be alive. You know, you can approach a situation like that one of two ways and you can kind of let it ruin you <laughs> or you can you know, see the positive in it. And I feel like that's so who you are. Yeah, thank you. I guess it helps that I've always, I mean, I love sports and I love a challenge of improving, right? And so it's just like, I was brought back on the board game, you know, back to the start and I'm relearning all these things. But I mean, it's either a hassle or it's also kind of fun to be like, okay, I can get to improve on all these different things again. And like, you know, baby steps, but the end result is always really cool. And it's rewarding to be able to do these things that I've, you know, put time and energy into practicing it's like how to do, how to walk, how to dance, how to try to jog, how to water ski. Yeah. You know, what happened to the driver of the car that cut into the express lanes? He got away. Left the, the scene. The police officer lost all of the information, all the witnesses. And he, we got him, but um, eventually somehow he got out of the whole case. <laughs> I don't know. So it just... He, he actually like made it to, he was Puerto Rican. He went to Puerto Rico and they like traced him there, but then all the power went out in Puerto Rico the <laughs> after storm? the storm and then couldn't track him anymore. So, hey, whatever. If it wasn't for my leg missing, we would have no proof that this accident ever happened. <laughs> Pretty crazy. So. Wow, wow. But yeah. you've, you've kind of just, I guess, are at peace with that and have moved on from that. How? What was disappointing is how inhumane they make things, you know, in the case. Like, you can't talk to each other. I just think, I mean, what I was hoping is that he would say sorry to me and my, Kathy and myself for his poor moves. But he never did, you know? And... I mean, it is a miracle that we're here to tell the story, but like so many accidents on the highway, especially motorcycle accidents end in death or paralysis or so I just, I just hope he doesn't do it again. That's all. I just, I, I can't guarantee that he's going to, he learned anything. I don't know if he learned anything from this experience. So that's what bothers me the most actually. Mm -hmm. No, that's understandable. Of course. Do you still ride motorcycles? I've been on the back a bunch, but I'm trying to, I'm looking into getting a, another bike here. I wouldn't be on the main streets or the highway anymore, but um, there's just too many crazy drivers in Miami mm -hmm. specifically. But to cruise around Coconut Grove and go to Key Biscayne would be magical. So <laughs> as that saying, you know, get back on the horse, get back on the motorcycle. <laughs> I love that. I love that, you know, because we have one life to live, right? Enjoy it and do the things that make you happy. How has this changed your life since 2015? Um, well, it definitely like put me into the disabled category, right? Which is a humongously broad group of people that are just chunked into disabled, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And so that was really interesting. And um, to become part of the Bold Beauty Project was such an amazing experience here in Miami to meet other amazing women with disabilities, all different types of dis disabilities. And just to realize that the body doesn't shape who we are, right? Or like our disability shouldn't shape us in a negative way. It should empower us in like a really bold, beautiful, strong way. And 
it was just really cool to see, um, to be part of a new community that I had never really thought of too much before I became part of it. It just opened my eyes to more things, which I, I enjoy. Absolutely. What about your artwork? Has this changed how you approach your art um, at all or changed? Have you incorporated? <laughs> ironically, ironically, my art helped me so much during this whole experience because I've always been able to see the beauty in other people's forms. You know, the naked body is a beautiful, natural thing. And we all have different shapes and parts. And it's just like, that's what makes us special and unique. And, and so then when I lost my leg, I was like, oh my gosh, I have a new shape. I have a new look. And that's beautiful. <laughs> I'm going to own it. And, you know, I want other people to see the beauty in themselves. And so that's exactly what my art has taught me how to do is I can also see the beauty in myself even with a leg missing, what does that mean? You know, still beautiful in a different way. <laughs> That's awesome. Do you have any specific examples? So now that you're realizing, hey, okay, I have a new body, a new art form um, that I can incorporate into your, my artwork. Cause I feel like I saw something maybe that you shared. Um, I don't know, maybe a specific piece of art that you created after this. I don't know if you have any examples of art or anything that you created that was inspired after this. Well, I, one of the projects was from the Bold Beauty Project where I painted um, a beautiful woman, Laquantis, into um, her mother, a couch that her mother gave her. Um, and she's paralyzed from the waist down. So that was a brand new project of working together with um, other women with disabilities to create art, which was really fun. And I've painted myself with one leg, I mean, without my leg on, just as an amputee. Um, but I'm not sure. I haven't done like a photo shoot with my leg on yet <laughs> and incorporated that. We'll see. So tell me about your art now so this is your primary thing that you do this is your life your passion your career um you know you said that your freshman year of college that you said i'm not going to do this because i'm not going to make any money off of this this is what you do now how have you made this into the beautiful career that you have well, I'm just grateful that other people can also see the beauty in the work that I create. The beauty of, of people and the naked form and how we're all connected. I just, that's, I guess, the overarching thing in my work. And red hands are, for me, a symbol of humanity. And so I have just been doing what I love to do. And I'm grateful that other people have tapped into enjoying it and also like getting something from it like this beautiful peaceful connection um, that animals have i think with their environments that people can have with their environments instead of changing places to tap into them and i think that i mean a lot of people have changed their own viewpoints on their bodies from looking at my artwork so i'm grateful for that but i mean it's not easy it's definitely not easy as an artist it's not like <laughs> I sell too much yet, but I'm trying, doing what I love. What has been one of the highlights of your career? Well, at Burning Man, I do these art happenings, which this one behind me is called Ashes to Ashes, Dust to Dust. And it's such a thrill when so many people come together to be part of an art happening that I've organized and everybody comes and takes off their clothes and covers the body with desert dust and painted cracks and red hands and just really creates this beautiful connection of community where everybody is naked, but it, there's nothing sexual about it. It's so natural. It's so beautiful. And that is quite a highlight when I'm like running around. I'm also naked because if I'm asking other people to be naked, I'm naked, but like just like running around organizing this, asking people to do this and that. So that's really exciting. It's a beautiful experience for me. And then the outcome is also just awesome. Beautiful. So 
at Burning Man too. At Burning Man. So I started going in 2011 and then I lost my leg in 2015 and then I've been back doing it. I took a break, but I was able to in 2019 do another art happening where I didn't want to like delegate it to other people. I needed to be able to run around again like I used to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was awesome to be able to organize it again as an amputee. And I was naked running around with my prosthetic leg and you know, it doesn't phase me. I'm just doing the same thing. And I think it helps other people see the beauty in their bodies too. If I can be like, yo, this is me, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> Absolutely. Is that the main message that you want people to take away? Or what is the message that you want people to take away from your artwork and you, the person? That we have more in common than we think, that we're all, you know, we are all born naked and have similar bodies. And it's just interesting how different cultures and religions taint the body in a way, you know, like put restrictions on it or make it taboo or sexualize. And what I want people to just hone back in is the natural, like the natural element of the human form naked is not sexual. I just think that in America, it's just so over-sexualized. And we all, with social media and what we're supposed to look like and who we're supposed to be, we're just bombarded with it always. So it takes a lot of self-confidence and just to be like, you know what, I don't care about who they're telling me to look like or be. I'm going, I'm happy to be who I am. And I know that like, we're always fluctuating with weight. We can gain weight, we can lose weight, and that's fine. It's actually in our control. It's willpower, right? Um, but if you have had a lot of fun and you've eaten the cakes and you drank a lot of wine and you gained weight, then own up to it. You know, you, you're chubbier right now and you're gonna be able to lose weight if you want to, but don't dislike yourself in the moment because you've gained the weight. And so a lot of people are always in that phase of, oh, I have to lose weight to be body painted. I'm just like, well, you need to appreciate yourself right now. You're beautiful the way you are right now. So with my art is that natural, the natural self, and then also this connection with places um, and that kind of re respect, that respect for places and different people and the red hands as this connection that no matter what environment we're personally connected to, a reminder that we're all connected to each other and this is humanity, no matter what body shape you have, no matter who you are, where you're from, what color, we're all humans and we're all still connected. So be kind to each other, love yourself, you know, connect with your environments is, I guess, the overarching message. I love that. Where can people find more about you, find your artwork? <laughs> Thanks. I have two different websites. One is there's nothing for sale there. It's just all my images and all my projects and my poetry and the Burning Man. And that's called CynthiaFleischman.com. And I have a new website called BodyPaintography.com where you can actually buy some of my works on um, their non-editioned prints there. So they're cheaper, which is great. And you can have it on, on like, I'm so excited. They're on um, cups and like tote bags. You can have my work on there. So I'm, it's fun to have that new avenue. And Instagram, I'm body paintography. Um, for my leg, I'm determined and improving on Instagram. If you want to see my progress as an amputee. And those are my pages and the Harmony Strand. I'm working on this other global project to exchange fireworks shows with drone light shows on New Year's Eve to align our entertainment with a positive start to the year and actually connect around the world for harmony at the beginning of the year. I love it. Yeah. I'm going to, that was a lot. So if you're listening <laughs> know, to I'm this, sorry. don't worry. I'm going to link to all that below in the show notes so you can find Cynthia on social media, find all of her projects below as well as where you can purchase some of her artwork as well. In closing, Cynthia, I want to ask you, because I always like to ask everyone who comes on this show, since we talk about health and happiness, about wellness and the importance of that. Um, so I like to ask my guests to share a health tip. It can be about health or happiness or just something that you feel like 
maybe either helped you or you see help other people that you feel like everyone should implement in their lives? What's helped me is not not really caring what other people think, right? I was like, if I need to go and work out or do something, I'm just, I'm doing it for me. I'm not doing it for other people. Like I, there's always looks, there's always things coming my way and just stay focused that this is something I'm doing for me. Um, but drink a lot of water. <laughs> That's important. I think we forget to drink water and um, just keep trying. Dancing is a really good sport. So if you don't want to go out and like, I get so lazy and unmotivated and then I just try and put on some music and just move around and not that can, that's exercise as well. Yeah. So, and if you're happy. interested in salsa dancing, you definitely got to hit up Cynthia. She's the perfect person to, to go on a lesson with. This is awesome, Cynthia. I'm so glad you agreed to come on and share your story because I'm inspired. I know just like every day you're inspiring more people. Thank you. I appreciate it. Can't wait for us to link up again. (laughs) Go Canes. (laughs) I hope you enjoyed hearing from Cynthia. She's just got such a positivity, a light about her and an inspiring story. I say that every week, but it's so true. So make sure you go below in the show notes, find her information, connect with her, check out some of her artwork. It's truly beautiful. I know that I will. And hey, stay connected with me. You know that I ask you to go to YouTube, connect with me on LinkedIn, subscribe, Instagram, Twitter, I'm all the places. I'd love to stay connected with you. And you know what? I'd also love to see you back next week. So until then, stay happy, stay healthy.